become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Amen. You're a virgin. And there was five wise and five foolish. And there was five left behind. Ooh, when the call came out to trim that lamp, to have that oil that burns that fire, that wick had too much. You ever try to uh, a Coleman lamp? You ever try to trim it? You see why you have to trim it? Because all that black stuff gets on the top of the wick. Mm -hmm. What's that black stuff? Soot. Sin. Mm -hmm. The only way to cut that and trim that wick spiritually is to repent. That's why you see churches not mentioning that anymore. But we can't talk about repentance. No, that just offends people. As a matter of fact, if you're saved, you have no need of repentance. Jesus is talking to the church here when He says, repent. In turn, do your first work, so I will remove that candlestick. You lose salvation, people. It'd be, it'd be removed. I'm not kidding you. That five foolish got left behind in the parable. They didn't go. The five foolish, that means they were Christians, but they would not live their life for God. They would not consecrate themselves. They would not repent from their evil doings. They would not repent from their apathy, their, their complacency. They're growing cold. People, that's sin. We say, no, that's normal. It's not normal. Our love should stay hot and burning for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you see the early church, you won't see one growing cold unless they're out of the body. You'll see them burning hot until they're hung on crosses upside down like Peter. Burning hot. Family can't deter them. No one can deter them because they know their first love. Amen. Do you know your first love? Amen. Because I believe he's trying to flow through them pipes, praise God, the sevenfold operation and aspects of the Spirit of God. We may have a few things working by the Holy Spirit, <coughs> but Jesus had the Holy Spirit without measure, it says. Amen. And that end time church is going to have the Holy Spirit without measure before the harvest to be saved. People will see the real Jesus in His body because He is the body. We are the body. And they'll see Jesus in you because the five, I mean the sevenfold operations of the Spirit will be operating in your life Knowledge, wisdom. Oh my goodness, we'll go over it in just a second. I almost jumped ahead of myself. Got to keep on. I love it. Woo. Let's back all this up with Scripture now, Daryl. I said this, Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, tells us why the seven lamps are that fire. It said, Revelation 4, verse 5, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps... There you go. A fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Sevenfold aspect of operations of the Holy Spirit. Because God doesn't have seven spirits. He's got one Holy Spirit. One Holy Ghost. So He's trying to show us something here. Many people are confused. I've heard pre people preaching that God has nine spirits. I'm serious. Oh. Big, big evangelist on TV. That's not what this means. Go with me to Isaiah 11, 1 and 2. Because I want you to see this. I want you to see it in the Word of God. So you won't be confused when someone says, God's got 10, 12, 15 spirits going on there. There's one Holy Spirit. Amen. But there's seven operations. And we're about to get to fullness. If you will allow Him to wake you. Oh, Jesus, wake me up. You there? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. He's talking about Jesus. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. And here's number one. The spirit of the Lord, first of all, shall rest upon him. Number two, the spirit of wisdom. And number three, understanding. Number four, the spirit of counsel. And number five, light. Number six, the spirit of knowledge. And seven, the fear of the Lord. Now, when you see that operating in a person's life or in a church, praise God, gee, that's the whole, that's the seven, that's the seven meanings. There's a spiritual meaning and there's a physical meaning. Sure, it means the seven churches. Oh, praise God. The candlesticks have the menorah. That's in the Exodus 25. You see, all the tabernacle stuff that was that Moses was laid down, told to lay down in there and build stands for something. It shows us something. The menorah that is talking about here, that seven lamps. That burn, it was in the holy place. In the holy place in the temple. To illuminate what? The word of God. 
to illuminate the Word of God and under, to have understanding and illumination of God's Word, you've got to have that fire of the Holy Spirit. You've got to have the seven lamps, the menorah, burning in your life. <laughs> the perpetual fire that doesn't go out. And He shows you this. And then you gain the sevenfold operation right here I'm talking about. What did it say? First of all, it's the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, will rest upon us. The Spirit of wisdom. You get wisdom and understanding. You get counsel. You get might. You're not scared. The Spirit of and knowledge and the fear of the Lord. There's a reverence in your life. You don't see that going on in churches these days. You may see certain counsel. You may see some have wisdom. You may see some have understanding, even in their own personal lives. But somewhere, sometimes we fall short in the reverence of God. Where's the Spirit of the fear of the Lord? The sevenfold operations of the Holy Spirit should be evident in our life. But we got to allow Him. We got to humble ourselves. The vessels in Judges chapter 7, Gideon's army, they had to be broken. And when the vessels were broken, the light came forth. And the Amorites fled and turned on one another. That's where you get the victory. When you allow Him to break you and humble you. Amen? Without Amen. stiffening your neck up in pride and saying, I know what I'm talking about. I know this is the right way. I'm going my own way. Instead of listening to His Holy Spirit and the Word of the living God. And you worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Not your own vain imagination of what you think Jesus is. Not your ideas, motives, and thoughts. But it's the Word. Let every man be a liar and the Word of God be true. Amen. Amen. That's where the sevenfold operation and those seven lamps start burning, praise God. Y'all see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This helps you understand what I'm saying here. Zechariah going to three and the two olive trees. By it, one upon the right side of the bowl <laughs> and the other upon the left side of the bowl. And so I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me saying, What are these, my Lord? And the angel who talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Remember, Zerubbabel, those born in Babylon, those born in confusion, even though they consecrated, even though they want the Lord's truth, they were born in the midst of Babylon people, born in the midst of confusion. Man, Thus saith the Lord unto Zerubbabel, that's us, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. One thing he's saying here is don't get your eyes on the olive trees. I'm going to explain who those olive trees are in just a minute. But you don't get your eyes on those carrying the oil. Olive trees carry olive oil. The anointing. However, your eyes are supposed to be on Jesus. Yeah. That's